Hi everyone, this is Nick Pollock here from Roar Lions Roar. While you're here, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that alert bell so you never miss any of our new content. And if you prefer to listen instead of watch, make sure you check us out on your podcast platform of choice where you can subscribe and download each new episode. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. Go State! Hello everybody and welcome back to Roar Lions Roar. This is your host tonight, Nick Pollock, and I am joined by my beautiful, lovely any adjective you can think of co-host mr craig fritz craig how you doing oh that's so kind of you to say nick it's a pleasure to be back after quite a long layoff and let's get right into it my man when was the last time you podcasted i i couldn't even tell you it was probably okay. like bowl prep of some sort maybe even before that um it's been a minute there were christmas oh, wow. decorations in here yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the the and the uh, the door behind you. There was a ghost. <laughs> we had ghosts <laughs> and uh, toy soldiers and Christmas trees. It's it was it was a scary time. But we, yeah, the, we the giant nutcracker that was ready to come to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you've been out of this even longer than I have. Wow, impressive. Um, well, Craig, we are here tonight to talk about the Penn State running back room. Perhaps the you know, it's tough to call it pound for pound the most talented room just because there's only so many bodies in it as compared to like, uh, you know, the receivers or the cornerbacks or the linebackers, but probably the most, you know, just in terms of what they do on the football field, probably the most exciting group they have. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. I mean, from the offensive perspective anyway, because how exciting can an O-line be? And then you have... <laughs> a lot of guys at receiver that are, you know, unproven trying to take over some top spots from Tinsley and Parker Washington. And then we just, you know, the quarterbacks are going to be in their first year of full action. So your, your known quantities here, are your game breakers. I mean, I think it's almost iconic in uh, Penn state fan lore right now. when uh, Gary Danielson and Brad Nessel were on the call at Auburn and, they're trying to just, you know, make a point and Singleton busts off a 54 yard touchdown and said, um, I'm even, I'm leaving. And you know, the rest is history. And I think that's here what... goes Singleton. There goes Singleton. Yep. So good. So good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those of you listening right now, hopefully you listened to the quarterbacks preview podcast yesterday or, you know, however many days ago whenever you're listening to this now but we did touch a bit on you know the impact that this running game should make on them so be sure to check that out um and craig also mentioned the wide receivers that'll be coming a day after this podcast in which craig uh accidentally makes a brief cameo while we're doing our ad read so be sure to listen for that it was very funny um but let's really briefly craig talk about what this running back room did last year a couple different faces in there then we'll see this year um but it was a really good year for a Penn State running back room that has been a bit maligned over the last, oh, three, four years or so. Looked like there was maybe a light in the tunnel with uh, Noah Kane, and then his injuries really caught up to him. And then it took the room a little bit to, you know, rebound. But last year, rebounded in a massive way, mostly thanks to the two stud freshmen, starting with Nick Singleton last year. 156 carries, broke 1,000 yards, 1,061 yards on the year, 12 touchdowns. Um, but he was not alone in that effort because fellow freshman blue chip recruit Katron Allen, the fat man, 167 carries, actually out carried Singleton, um, 867 yards on the year, 10 touchdowns, also was the more prolific receiver of the two, 20 catches, 188 yards through the air, and one score on a uh, you know scramble drill, busted play against Ohio State. Uh, Sean Clifford also last year contributed to the load rushing 69 carries for 176, 176 yards and five touchdowns. Kevon Lee, 25 carries, 94 yards, zero touchdowns on the ground. But of course, he had the iconic uh, receiving touchdown to win the game against Purdue in week one. Um, and then there's a little bit of Tank Smith last year, a little bit of Devin Ford before he decided to hang up the cleats for good. Um, so really interesting room last year, a mix of some old and some new um Kevon Lee now has gone to boy where did he end up do you know I honestly couldn't tell you I forget he went somewhere um Sean Clifford obviously off currently attempting to wrestle the starting job with the Green Bay Packers from Jordan Love Tank Smith finally graduated felt like he was in college for about 
probably as long as Sean Clifford was, um, and Devin Ford decided to retire from football. Although I think he did initially put his name in the portal and then decided to just, you know, hang around as a student, which, hey, good for him. Yeah, that was the whole um, bit after the Auburn game. He decided to, he had his four games in, and so he decided to withdraw from the team. So he maintained his ability to go somewhere and still have another year of eligibility with the COVID year. And yeah. Kevon Lee transferred to uh, Mississippi State. Mm, that's right yeah hopefully he finds success down there hopefully he does they've really you know contributed some great moments to penn state football um so i think the thing last year my main question is you know we knew nick singleton and katron allen were going to play a role i think it became clear as camp went on that that role would be fairly significant but how significantly would you say that pair kind of surpassed your expectations of them last year? I'm, I mean, I, I have to say wildly, right? Because you look at coming into the season, you're expecting there maybe to be sort of like a three headed monster. Maybe this situation where Lee has a majority of the carries for the first quarter of the season and then kind of seeds slowly to the freshmen as they get acclimated. And he ended up with, 25 carries in five games. Um, yeah. It was basically a non-factor other than the Purdue game. And Singleton and Allen just took the world by storm. And re- I mean, just we talked, I touched on the Auburn game earlier, but goodness gracious, I mean, <laughs> there was just an absolutely dominating performance. And that was like, hey, we're here. And they, you know, put their stamp on the rest of the year. And obviously there were some bumps in the road. You know, Singleton got happy bump, trying to bump everything outside or beat the corner when, you know, not following his blocks or following his reads. And the O-line struggled um, every now and again. But I, I, I think if anyone went into the season and said, these guys are going to combine for what, uh, over 1,900 yards, nearly 2,000 yards between the two of them, they would have said, you're crazy. That's freshman. That's like not a thing that happens it's in wild. Penn State. Um, so, yeah, it's, I, th- I think the coolest thing about last year um is just is the way you you touched on it you know they they both went through their bumps and bruises like singleton was the first guy to kind of bust out and be right. and really you know announce his presence so with a couple uh what he went for like a uh, 160 something yards i think against ohio yeah like a um, 70 yarder and a 56 yarder or something like that yeah just like very immediately said like hey i'm here i'm the guy but then like you said you know he got a little um big play happy he got a little big play searchy i'm gonna make up that term um (laughs) he he attempted to bump some things outside that he probably shouldn't have he had you know free first downs right in front of him he chose not to take it and that's when we saw katron allen really take on more of a role because he i think uh singleton obviously has the big play ability he's got the speed allen i think does have better vision and I think he came in with better vision probably still has better vision now he just doesn't have you know the speed of singleton to turn every run into an ADR run. You know, if he did, he would have been a top five recruit in the country. Like you combine those two, that's a top five high school player. Um, But we saw him step in and be able to be a steady hand for the offense. And then we kind of saw Singleton work his way back in. I feel like Northwestern was really the turning point for him as far as starting to get a better understanding of how to be a complete running back. We Mm -hmm. saw him, you know, and obviously the conditions of that game played into it too. Very rainy, very wet. But we really saw him start to, you know, lower shoulder, go through tacklers. And it was just really cool. And we saw, and then we saw, you know, as the season went on, we saw Katron Allen start to do a bit more in the open field. Like it's just so cool. It was so cool getting to watch these two learn from each other and like pick up on the things the other one was doing that they needed to improve on. And all the reports have been they've continued to do that. Like we've heard that. Katron Allen is now faster and Nick Singleton has gotten better at reading defense. Like it's, it's, it could not be a more perfect situation. What Penn state has built here in that running back room, having these two to just constantly learn from each other and constantly push each other to get better. I very much agree that I, you know, I expected both of them to play a role. I was, you know, I was high man on the totem pole. I think on the the fat man train from the second you certainly the second were. he committed. Yes. Um. So I I was expecting big things from me. I don't know if I expected 867 yards and 11 touchdowns as a true freshman while sharing the role with another true freshman. Like I don't I don't think even I saw that coming. But um, really a special season for those guys. 
Um, you know, sad to see Kevon Lee and Devin Ford go, both really talented guys, but you know, that's what happened. That's how college football works. When you got two dudes that are looking like, you know, they could both be Heisman candidates at some point, if they continue on this track, that's just kind of what happens. I think the question now though, Craig, these two are clearly the lead dogs in that room. How much more should we expect from them in 2023? You know, it's a great question, Nick. And so you're looking at their touches, right? Allen Mm -hmm. had 187 touches. Singleton had 167 touches. You would love to say that their touch numbers would be about in that same range, just because that means that Penn State's likely doing well. Um, They're sharing the load and not getting overworked and probably avoiding injury. Um, I could see it ticking up, you know, ideally maybe 10 to 15% a piece, but you had to look at the the carries that they're absorbing. Lee only had 25, Devin Ford only had seven. So where are the other carries going to come from? Obviously we think Penn State is probably going to run the ball more this year than last year, even though it already ran more than it passed a year ago. Um, I don't expect uh, Drew Aller to run 70 times like Sean Clifford did. And maybe that's foolish. Maybe that's not right. Maybe it will be something that is still in the Yersich offense. Uh, I hope to not see, to not have to see him run 70 (laughs) times and to give it to these um, ridiculously talented running backs. And, you know, to circle back, I think one thing that could expand on this, you look at their average per play, Singleton was already at 6.8 yards a carry. Uh, Allen's already at 5.2 yards a carry. But as the season wore on, I felt that Yursich was designing plays that fit their strengths. Um, yeah. You know, he was scheming for the talent that he had versus, okay, you're a freshman. This is what we run. Find the hole. And realizing that he had two very special players in the backfield and scheming to get them into space as well as possible. And I think that's going to continue um, in this year coming up. So, you know, here, Lord willing, they stay healthy. I think that's the biggest thing, but I don't know. I'm expecting them to combine to go over 2000 yards this year. And I would like to see Singleton more involved in the passing game. Only caught 11 balls last year where Allen had 20. So it's 31 balls between them in the passing game. I think you're going to see um, with a reduced load on Drew Aller as far as trying to figure things out that the check down is a very popular option for him. Um, and, you know, I'd love to see an offense where the running running backs are combining for like 50 catches to 60 catches between the two of them. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It's I, I think that's probably fairly likely for the reason like, yeah, I we know Mike Yersich has a lot of faith in Drew Aller, but he's going to want to make things as easy for him as possible while still, you know, putting points on the board. And we exactly. know how talented these guys are. So like, that's, that's a, a really good way to score a lot of points is to get the hands and get the ball in the hands of these two guys. Um, I very much agree. I fully expect them both go to combine to go over 2000. I think there's a pretty good chance. They both rush for over a thousand yards. The only thing I think would hold that back would be how much involvement Trey Potts ends up getting. Sure. Uh, But we'll end up talking. We'll talk about him in just a minute here. Um, I think, Craig, the last question I have before we move on here is, do you expect the carries to be pretty much even again, or do you think one of them will start to take a little bit more of the lion's share? Man, it's a tough question because, like, what – it's all situationally based, right? So if they're looking for the tough yards – it feels like Allen is the guy. If they want to shut down the game and grind it out and preserve a lead, it feels like Allen is the guy. And that's not to say Singleton can't excel at that skill set as well. As you said, you know, he started to show in Northwestern a little bit more willingness for the tough yards um, to move the pile, et cetera. But like everyone needs their role, right? Like right. it's just because they can both do both things it's right. important to have roles on an offense like that that should be Catron's job no i agree and, and roles and ex, it sets expectations as well if the players understand yeah. exactly what's going on um I, I honestly would not at all be surprised to see us an even split again unless in their development 
it somehow got to a point where say Singleton has just now is like junior year Saquon Barkley sure. and Katron Allen is sophomore Katron Allen. I, I, I don't, I don't see that as likely, but you know, if you have a player that develops into an otherworldly individual, then obviously you're going to want them to touch the ball more than anybody else. Yeah. I do think that is the one caveat here is that, um, James Franklin understands optics and I think he understands how valuable it is to have a Heisman level player. So if there's an opportunity to like get either of these guys to New York for the Heisman ceremony, I got to believe he's going to do, you know, give them what they need in order to get there because that that's just a really big boon for the program. Huge. It's yeah, it just is. Um, Craig, you know what else is a really big boon to the program? <laughs> that's a great segue. <laughs> When everyone around it is wearing beautifully crafted and, you know, heartfelt, heartfeltly, is that an adjective? Designed apparel. And that's what our friends at Homefield Apparel do. Um, Craig, have you picked up anything from the new, uh, the new shipment of Penn State stuff? You know, I have not had an opportunity yet, but I am putting I things either. on my list. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been meaning to go on and finish my cart. I, I'm thinking I want to put it in sometime this week. So I get it just in time for football season. Um, if you have not heard home field apparel released a whole bunch, of, I believe a 13 piece collection the script, of, baby, uh, is sweet. Yeah. Of new Penn state apparel to go along with the 15 piece collection. They released way back when, when Penn state fans went balloons, balloons, berserk. Ballistic ballistic something with a b and broke the uh big new saturday record for which will never be broken because they don't do that anymore so good for you fans um but you know about home field apparel premium collegiate apparel line based in indianapolis where big 10 dreams are made or shattered um but they have over 150 schools to choose from it's not just penn state you know like you can hop on and get random t-shirts for anything you could go on and get something from our new uh big 10 brothers over in eugene oregon why not they got cool stuff you know they have cool jerseys you know they're gonna make cool shirts and joggers and sweatshirts and all that stuff too um but you know like we said home field they just they care they they dig through the yearbooks they dig through the old posters they find all that old stuff to make cool designs that you know it's not just a it's not just a random t-shirt you get from say fanatics that just has like the chipmunk on it like they find stuff that makes you feel connected to your school because you recognize it from a time when maybe you were on campus or something like that. So, you know, they, they make it special for you and we have a way to make it even more special for you because if you visit homefieldapparel.com and you want to order something, let's say, I don't know, let's say you hop on there and you just keep clicking around and you find uh, 50 t-shirts you really like. You might be thinking to yourself, this is way too many t-shirts. I can't afford all this, but I have a secret for you. Because if you use a new email account and you sign up for a new account on the website and you enter that code RLR23, all new caps, code. all one word, RL. Oh, what? New code. New code. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. I thought you said I was cutting out. I got no, very worried. Because this is no, a good, good ad read. It's a great um, ad read. RLR23. Yes, not the old code. This is a new code for the new year. New football year. RLR23. You can use that code on that cart with 50 t-shirts, 20 pairs of joggers, maybe 10 sweatshirts. I don't know. I don't know your feeling. But you can use that and get 15% off that entire cart. There is no limit on what you can get that 15% off of. Think about that. Think about how much money you could save by using RLR23. You could get your Christmas shopping done now on August. I'm sitting here recording this on August 7th. You could be done right now. That sounds like a great, efficient way to use your time and support our wonderful friends over at Homefield Apparel because we have loved working with them over the last year plus now. Um, great friends, great sponsors of the podcast. Love working with them. They make great stuff. We wear it all the time. We love it. Highly recommend homefieldapparel.com code rlr23 for your first time checking out for 15 percent off of your first order let's get back to talking about running backs craig rbs baby the backups backup running back is an interesting place in the college football landscape because it's not always the you know the wide receiver room is full of athletic freaks at all times 
The backup quarterback is the most popular guy on campus. <laughs> backup running backs kind of have a bigger range of ability sometimes. And even more so, like a range of where guys are at in their careers. That is definitely the case right now with this Penn State room. Transfer from Minnesota, Trey Potts, Pennsylvania native, coming over to be, you know, expected to be the third guy up in that room. And kind of a unique situation for Penn State in that, well, not so unique because they thought they were getting in Storm Duck at quarterback, but somebody who knows they is knows they are coming in to be a backup, ready to fill that role. And he seems like someone who's going to be able to do it at a really high level. Last year, Trey Potts, 101 carries, 471 yards, three scores, three catches, 23 yards, even more prolific the year before. This is a really good running back that Penn State picked up. And it is, you know, indicative of the portal era. Who knows if Trey Potts just was sick of PJ Fleck in Minnesota, wanted to change the scenery, wanted to come home, wanted to... Very possible now based on reports. Sure, you know, and whatever his reasons may be, it is a benefit. It's a beneficial situation for Penn State to have a guy in the room that has been through the grind, has been through injury, has played in the Big Ten behind some very good offensive lines yeah. um, and has gone through the grind for several years. It's just, you know, a sounding board. The more experience in that room, they lost Lee and Ford, who were the elder statesmen. And if you don't get a guy like Trey Potts in there, you have two true freshmen and two true sophomores as your running back room. And the only voice of experience that they're listening to is their running back coach. Like they don't have anyone else to lean on that's done this at a high level um, and gone through the struggles. And, you know, frankly, the, the, the good times too, obviously like Trey Potts in 2021 got injured, but in five games was averaging 110 yards a game, uh, for the golden gophers. So this isn't like a guy that's been a, you know, a, a, a practice squad type player or like, a, a you know, a bench player. He's had a big role on a big 10 team and done very well. Um, and I think Penn state is hugely fortunate to um, have brought him in for this year. Yeah. It's, it's just huge for that room. Like you said, in terms of experience, because, you know, God forbid, Nick Singleton or Katrin Allen were to get injured, but you'd really like to have, for as talented as the two freshmen we're about to talk about are, you'd really like to have someone who's been there before because, you know, it 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 can fall off the rails really quickly if you don't have a strong run game. We saw that from Penn State for multiple years before last year, and it's just really nice to have someone that you can feel comfortable with. Even though it's his first year in the offense with Trey Potts, I think we all feel pretty comfortable that he can very easily take the torch when he needs to, and at the very least be a serviceable, serviceable back. Um, hopefully someone who can get involved a bit in the passing game as well, and maybe even be someone that they can call on to be a pass protector in you know, obvious passing situations. More, and this is not to diss Trey Potts, I think he's a very good running back, but even more interestingly than Trey Potts, we have another pair of freshmen, just like Singleton and Allen last year. Not as prolific when it comes to the recruiting rankings, but it sounds like these guys are already doing a good job of establishing themselves within the camp atmosphere for Penn State, and that's London Montgomery and Cam Wallace. Cam Wallace comes in with tr crazy track star speed, like probably is the fastest, maybe the probably the fastest player on the roster right now overall, probably. I mean, possibly he, yeah. So as this is just from his recruiting background, but as an 11th grader took second in the Georgia state one, a meet in the 200, I don't, I'm assuming one, a is small school. I don't know if it's one, a as big school there or not, but, um, kid can fly. Let's yeah. And you know, if I, I believe we've, you know, we, we've seen, I, I feel like I remember a video circulating last year about, I, I think he hit the fastest recorded sprint speed of any player they found in high school football last year. Um, like with the pads on running with the football, I could be wrong. I feel like I remember that though. Um, but it actually it's now that I said it, it's Canon. So you have to believe me. Um, yeah, but obviously great. 
obviously he brings an exciting skill set and you know that's that's the type of player you could see get on the field early um just someone you know you can fly but i think the the other name here is actually a bit more interesting london montgomery because it sounds like from all the recruiting guys it sounds like this was somebody that they expected to can like i i don't remember what his ranking ended at i know he dropped a bit because he uh missed almost his entire senior season, maybe the entire senior season um, due to injury. But he was somebody that a lot of people were expecting to actually continue rising in the rankings. He is a really exciting talent. And I would assume, even though he's, it, I believe he is full go now or close to full go, I would assume they try to keep him, you know, mostly on the sidelines just to allow him to continue recovering. Um, because, you know, the first two guys in this depth chart aren't going to be here for long and you're going to need running back sooner rather than later. But London Montgomery is a name that I think Penn State fans should be really excited for going forward. So, Craig, my question for you is which of these two, and maybe my caveat kind of answered it here, but which of these two do you expect to make a bigger impact in 2023? I would have to say Cam Wallace just because of the speed factor. If Mm. you, you know, they're always looking for, uh, you know, that type of thing in the kick return game um, as a change of pace back. Now let's be clear here. I, unless there are major injuries in the room, I don't expect either of these guys to play more than the four game red shirt limit. Um, And we hope that there's not a need for that, you know, um, in the Penn state running back room. Now, if they come in and have the ability to make a difference, so be it. Um, But I think for 2023, a guy like Cam Wallace can be, if he has hands coming out of the backfield, you know, one of these kind of like aces that Yursich has employed over the past couple of years where defenses don't know where the ball is going to go. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're gashed for 20, 30 yards. And maybe it doesn't, it's not a play that you can go back to time and time again, but it's that one surprise play that gets you a crucial first down or crucial huge chunk of yardage in a big game. And those are the types of things that can make a difference. So I think for 2023, just because Montgomery is coming off of this injury um, and the speed and athleticism that Wallace has, I would I would pick Cam Wallace. Yeah, I think all that's very fair. So the other half of that question is, which one of these two do you expect to have a bigger impact over the course of their careers at Penn State? So caveat for me here is that I have not heard and not paid attention to any reports from camp, just been super busy with work and kids. Um, How dare you? Yeah, I I know. (laughs) Couldn't drop everything and (laughs) read every camp report trickling out of the the paid sites. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll just say Montgomery just because looking at his, his high school film, he looks like a more complete back, the type of back that yeah. Penn State likes to recruit as a feature back. Um, so with a ton of uh, margin here that it really could be either of them, I will say London Montgomery for having the better career at Penn State. I agree. It's Your point is... Uh, spot on I think he's he's more the profile of the type of running back that they want to be the bell cow I think there is certainly going to be a role for Cam Wallace throughout his career and you know who can I could very easily see Cam Wallace go on to have a very prolific Penn State career with that kind of speed you know if you could put everything else together it's it's right there for you it's all there for the taking but I agree I think Montgomery is probably the better bet to be the um more complete long-term player and therefore the more prolific prolific of the two. But I also agree that Cam Wallace is probably the one to make a bigger impact this year. Craig, any final thoughts on the running backs before we get out of here? Well, just to circle the back on, on this is I think it's a really interesting recruiting job for James Franklin and his team and his, you know, his recruiting group to bring in a guy like Montgomery and Wallace, because you're going to be hard pressed to get stud running backs after everyone in the country watches Nick Singleton and Catron Allen have the freshman seasons that they did knowing that there's limited playing time, limited opportunity. If you are a similarly calibered running back coming in, but they found, you know, they stuck with Montgomery through his injury. They found Cam Wallace 
um, as a guy that had decent offers and high level of speed, maybe against competition that wasn't the highest level in Georgia. And he's a little bit smaller, but I think it's a testament to them really turning over every stone and finding some guys that fit the ethos of their program, but also can fit in and not be the ones that are demanding day one playing time, but are also still really talented and can make an impact. So kudos to them there. And man, my last thought is I am freaking excited to watch Nick Singleton and Katron Allen run between behind Olu Fashanu and the rest of uh, the road graders that, um, that Penn state's putting out this year. Whew. It should be very fun indeed. You know, we expect the Penn State running game to lead the way for the offense this year. We expect the offensive line to be maybe the best it's ever been under James Franklin. So there's a lot of things coming together for um, this group of guys. Last question, Craig, gun to your head. Before his career at Penn State is done, do we see Nick Singleton in New York at the Heisman ceremony? Ooh, man. Uh, Yes. Nice. Love it. On yeah. that note, we're going to get out of here. Um, as always, please make sure you are subscribed on your podcast platform of choice. Make sure you uh, leave us a five-star review on Apple if you're able. Make sure you check us out on YouTube as well. Subscribe and hit the alert button so you don't miss any of our new content. You can see our faces, say the words. It's really fun and entertaining. We actually get a lot of fun comments on there too, especially from opposing fan bases when we start doing that stuff. It's fun to hear other people chime in and you know give their side of things. Uh, so we've st started to build a slowly building a fun little community over there. So make sure you join if you have a chance. Make sure you visit homefieldapparel.com. Use that code RLR23, all one word, to get 15% off of your first order. And make sure you come back tomorrow to check out our wide receivers preview, which, once again, quick cameo from Craig right in the middle of the ad read. Uh, for myself, Nick Pollock, thank you all for listening. For my co-host, Craig Fritz, thank you all for watching. Go State. Go State.